1603. The Edo era has just begun in Japan. Shogun Tokugawa creates 69 postal stations between the key cities of Kyoto and Edo, now Tokyo. Now this is postal station number 43, Magome. It's where the road starts to head into the mountains, gets a little treacherous, so in the 1800s when they built railroads, it was bypassed and forgotten and it kind of fell apart. Luckily, since then, it's been restored and they restored it to how it looked in the Edo era. So as we explore Magome, we are exploring 400 years into Japan's past. Now most people just day trip to Magome, but I wanted to take full advantage of being here. So I checked into Magome Chaya, one of the few guest houses right in the middle of the village. Shoes off before entering, of course, and then off to check out the room. While the room lacks a bed, it makes up for it with some wonderful views of the surrounding hillsides. And don't worry, there is a place for me to sleep. It's just more of a self-service situation. All right, I've never set up my own bed at a hotel before, but I've got instructions right here. How hard could it be? Everything in Magome closes really early. So literally the only place still serving food by the time I got there was this little bun shop. So, buns for dinner. Oh, thank you. Oh, take the whole thing. Grato. Mm. Hot. Really tasty beef on the inside. Turns out the bun was just an appetizer for the main course. One of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen. Even the moon showed up early to take a look at this sunset. So here's the thing with Magome. Very popular, lots of tourists during the day walking around, checking out this beautiful historic path. But at 5 p.m., a chime sounds, and around this time of year, that's when the sun is setting, and it just turns into a ghost town. All the shops close, all the people disappear, but I'm staying at one of the few inns that are on the path, so, I'm gonna be here even when there's no one else here. It is wonderful here during the evenings. It is quiet and peaceful. The only sound you hear is the sound of the water that runs down the length of the entire path. And I just feel like I have this whole village to myself. It's incredible. Just on the edge of the town here is the old bulletin board, which was how they would communicate what people needed to know back before email. I've just exited the Edo side of town, leaving the comfort and protection of Postal Station 43 Magome behind as I trek two hours through the forest to Postal Station 42, Sumago, hopefully Bandits don't attack me along the way. Tokugawa, he'll protect me, right? All right, the sign says, ring bell hard against bears, but I don't see any bears right now. So should I ring the bell? Or would ringing the bell attract bears that weren't around? Yeah. It's not all forest on the path to Sumago. This is fairly well paved because people live here and farm. We're back in the forest. This is a beautiful hike, and I'm no hiking maven by any means, but 
you're next to a babbling brook the whole time, forest is beautiful, and it's empty. I've seen like two other people this whole time, which is peaceful and awesome. All right, we're approaching some buildings up here. Let's see what we got. This is the Tateba Tea House, built in the late Edo period in the 1800s. The tea is free, they have little snacks. Ah, uh, it's just what I need halfway on this journey. This place is magic. Energized and full of tea, I'm ready to complete the trek to Sumago. Yeah, I'm not really feeling the 1600s vibe on this part of the trail. I've emerged from the forest unscathed by bears and I'm almost to Sumago. Right now I'm just in the outskirts, you know, Sumago suburbs. Made it, Sumago. Post town number 42. And it's got this great old school main street. Feels like something out of the old west, but there'd be a samurai battle at noon instead of gunfighters. Glad I made it here. And of course they have their own town bulletin board and water mill. And now I'll return to Magome just as they would have done 400 years ago in the Edo era on this bus. One of my days in Magome, it rained the whole time, which was a bummer. But luckily there was this incredible soba house right next to where I was staying. Beautiful. Arigato. A cold, rainy day in Magome. So I'm inside with a nice hot, cup of soba, gohe mochi, a local delicacy. Doesn't get any better than this. Great soba. Now, when I said everything in Magome closes after 5 p.m., there is an exception. This is Haganoya, a restaurant I've heard great things about. I have no idea what to expect, but I'm hungry and I think it's gonna be good. Hi, Hi. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bye. This is a first. My own private dining room. I'm the king of Magome. I poured myself tea and sake, different cups, and took in my garden view because once this set menu started, it wasn't stopping. The cream on the vegetables was so good that I'm just scooping it up with one of my chopsticks and eating all of it. It's a private dining room. 
No one can judge me. Except for all of you. はい、えー、ドビン虫になります。こうやって。で、こうやって、ここにスープ。OK。スープ。で、コンビニだ。Got it。で、中も召し上がってください。Oh. This will shock you. It's great. Wonderful meal, just me and my thoughts and my private little chamber here. All right, I hate talking about what things cost, but they have three versions there for the set menu. They have a 2,000 yen version, a 3,000 yen version, and then what I got, which was the 5,000 yen version, because I figured, hey, when in Magome, right? But also, 5,000 yen is about 30 bucks. So for a private dining set menu experience like that, that's a deal you can't beat. Magome, beautiful, quiet little village. Truly felt like I was walking around in Japan in the 1600s, because I kind of was. But now it's time to leave the water wheels behind. And head back to now. <laughs>